Okay, we're starting off a bit different here for this repair. This is a Cortec KT1420A that was sent in because it had vertical collapse. Uh, it's already been reflowed and cap kit and flyback and a bunch of rework trying to get it solved. Uh, but this was sent in as vertical collapse. So I inspected everything and all visually seemed okay. Hooked it up and tested it just to verify the discrepancy. And it turns out that we actually have horizontal collapse. Not vertical. Vertical collapse is a line this way because there's no vertical deflection. Horizontal collapse is a line up and down because there's no horizontal deflection. This is horizontal collapse. Very different from vertical. So we're going to turn this off before we burn a line in the tube and we'll get it back off of the tube and see if we can figure out what's going on. Well, I went through and did everything you could possibly humanly imagine. I checked all the solder joints, I checked the pots, I checked the horizontal width caps, I checked the linearity coil, I checked the uh, width coil, I checked all the capacitors to make sure they're the right locations and the right ratings, I checked solder joints and I mean everything under the, under the sun. I did comparative readings on the uh, IC there, the H1125 I think it is, the one right there that I think I, yeah, H11235. I checked all of those pads and then comparative readings against one I have here that's working. I could find no real issues and it still collapsed. But I did find that if I push if I push on here, watch what happens. See that? Whoa, and then it collapses all uh, vertical collapse as well and it goes crazy like there's no yoke plugged in. So right now I'm I just press on it. If I press on it here, watch this. I'm gonna press on it right now. Pressing, pressing, pressing. If I hold it, it does it does that. So there's some kind of bad solder joint going on here, coupled with other issues. So <laughs> I got to keep going. I'll let you know what I find out. Okay, so I went through and looked at the board and tried to figure out what might be causing that that issue of the uh, the symptom changing when you push on the board, and I found what looks like a crack. I found this right here. You can see that it's clearly cracked across here all the way from where am I where's my pointer here oh let's see from here all the way across here it looks like it's cracked and so I get the fiberglass pen out and scraped away the traces however when we do continuity here uh, there we go they've all got continuity but I'm sure that when you push on if you notice that it's cracked right across here, there's this tab. That tab just happens to be uh, the heat sink here that I was pushing on. So we're going to have to, this may be a twofold issue. This may be a secondary problem and not the, the direct cause of our collapse. So I'm going to repair this and we're going to test it again and see if it still does the problem when I push on it. If that problem is solved, then at least we've figured out one issue. But their board may be cracked in other spots as well. So it's going to be tough to say for sure. So there we go. All three of those are now repaired. So now um, there's clearly no bridge there. Let's go ahead and hook it back up and see if push, see if maybe our collapse is fixed. I doubt it. And then check to make sure that we don't lose our, uh, make sure it doesn't go all haywire again after that, because at least we can fix one problem and then see if we can fix the other one here by continuing on our, with our troubleshooting. So let's see if I fixed that uh, problem we just showed here, and then we'll kind of go from there. All hooked back up and operational, and we still have collapse, unfortunately. But if I push on the, on the board here, that seems to have been repaired. So the issue of losing deflection completely and getting wider and going out and all that craziness, that appears to be solved now by fixing that broken, uh, those three broken traces. So now it's back to, back to the drawing board again for the horizontal collapse and see if we can get this solved. I'll do some more testing, poking around, see what I, what I can find and come back when we have a solution. Okay, so I've gone through and, and checked things over again, and I think I found the problem. I missed it the first time around, but I think this time I found it. Uh, I generally like to start with the header pins. On vertical collapse, you can usually go right to the vertical IC or vertical ICs and that kind of stuff. But on horizontal collapse, I like to start with the actual header pins. 
And a lot of times you can find the problem near the header pins or around the header pins. And the first time I checked everything, I just went through and checked and I'll show you, I'll see if you can spot it before I show it. Uh, I went through and checked, you know, here to here, here to here. So these two are, these two pins here are, are horizontal and these two pins here are vertical. The vertical are the closer of the two, they're closer together and horizontal is further apart. So you have these two horizontal pins and you have these two horizontal pins. The vertical are here and vertical are here. It switches it around for, you know, to flip your image. Uh, there's two different sets of header pins, but so if we go to the, the horizontal header pins are these two here. If we go here to here, it's good. Here to here is good. Here to here is good. All that stuff. Uh, I didn't notice the first time around that there is a red wire here that runs right to this header pin for the horizontal. See horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical. This header pin has this red wire attached to it that runs over here to the circuit here off the flyback. And if we look close enough, we can see that it is indeed cracked again, right here, right there. The trace is broken. And if we go here to here, no continuity. It's intermittent. I push real hard, yeah. I push real hard, let go, see, it's gone. So, what we're going to do is just bridge it. Uh, there we go. All right, now. Let's hook it up and see what it does now. All right, so some interesting developments have occurred in the last hour or so since I last left you just a moment ago. Uh, we found that broken trace uh, for that red wire, which was this one here. Uh, this wire here had that broken trace leading to the uh, video header pin. I'm sorry, not video, the uh, horizontal header pin for the yoke. So we fixed that. And that absolutely was the problem of the horizontal collapse. Uh, but while I was filming and testing and giving this a signal, the monitor died, lost power, the main uh, AC input fuse blew, and I just kind of went back to square one and threw my hands up and said, oh, I hate these Cortex. But I persisted, and it turns out that the R512 resistor uh, it's supposed to be a 5 ohm resistor. It resides right there. This resistor decided to open up and it I don't know if it opened up as a result of the voltage regulator going bad or the HOT going bad. I can't say, but the HOT decided to die, the voltage regulator decided to die, and R512 decided to open up. Uh, I have no idea why that happened. Maybe it was a cascade, maybe the voltage regulator. This is the original voltage regulator, uh, 2SD871. It's got some scratches on it. Someone's been doing something with this, and it had been either replaced or messed with in the past. I could tell by the solder joints here on the wires. So I think this might have just simply failed at the most inopportune time. And then that, take, that failing took out the HOT, which in turn took out... R512, which then blew the fuse. So I, I have no idea. Uh, you would think that this fuse would blow before the main fuse would go, but that's not what happened. This fuse stayed intact and then the main fuse went out. So I put a new main fuse in there, put a new HOT in, new voltage regulator, and replaced R512 with a uh, wire wound version, a 5 ohm. I, th I think that's a. Uh, I don't know what what is. I stole that off of a U5000. Uh, but there's no chance of that ever burning up. That wattage is more than a adequate for this this uh, application. But it is uh, 5 ohms. This is supposed to be 5 ohms, and it's completely open. So after changing out R512, the voltage regulator and HOT with brand new parts uh, that I had on hand, uh, and that got the chassis up and going again, and 
I, I talked about before that I was uh, working on this and that's when it died but it, the broken solder pad on that red wire I think it what was it V I forget what it was um, I've got this spare one here uh, it was this connection right here J A that J A is the red wire and it runs over here to the corresponding J A right there and it's uh, this wire here this red wire and this is a working chassis so I didn't want to rob that R512 from here so I just grabbed a 5 ohm uh, resistor from a U5000 so anyway all right so this is now back up and running and that broken solder pad on the JA post there for the the horizontal pin fixed our horizontal collapse so let's turn it on and we can see it in action one two three okay comes right on and full deflection. Any moment now, there you go. So okay, this all boiled down to a simple broken, well we had three broken traces that I had to repair coming off that those flyback uh, traces and that one broken pad for the uh, causing the horizontal collapse. So after fixing all that we can go ahead and turn our flyback down and there we go. All right, so now let's turn this back off. Let me cut away, give it a video signal, and then we'll turn it back on on the tripod and see how we can, uh, how good we can make it look. Okay, test pattern generator is hooked up. Let's turn it on. Uh, we're all secure, ready to go. Hopefully, we don't have any issues. Uh, so let's grab our adjustment tool, just a preemptive measure, and turn it on. One, two, three. Okay, comes to life. And hopefully, we, oh, we got to adjust vertical hold here. And our vertical size is way wrong, so let's adjust vertical size. There we go. Vertical position. Okay, that works. Uh, H position. What's going on? What is going on there? Oh, that was odd. Did you see that? Huh. Well, that was weird. Okay, H position. Do we have width control? Get in there. Where are you at? There we go. Oh, we do indeed have width control. Okay. That looks about perfect right there. Look at that! Full square image! Do we have RGB? We do indeed! Look at that! Blanking. I can do work some magic here. See that? A magic wand. <laughs> Alright! Let's turn this off. Back on. Well, how, how do you do? What do you know? Um, Let's see if we can make focus look a bit better. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, the this t this tube needs some convergence work. Ah, but there we go. Let's see what we can, how we, good we can make it look with an actual PCB. So, uh, you know what? Scratch that because my JAMA connector is a full ten pin connector, uh, and this is only a six pin connector, and there's. I'll show you here. Check this out. The video connection here uh, is only a six pin connection and it's got those uh, sync, the sync selector switch there. So if I try and hook up a 10 pin connector from my JAMA rig, it won't fit. So uh, my only option is the test pattern generator. I just wanted to see if I could make it look, uh, get some colors adjusted, and how good I could make it look with the actual PCB. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because of the type of connection here. Uh, 
but uh, anyway, yeah, so I think we are good to go. Um, let's see, make sure, yep, we got good adjustments here. All right, so uh, to review, I guess we had uh, that broken solder joint by the horizontal yoke pin connector, and we had those three broken traces from the cracked board, got all four of those components fixed, and then we had a, uh, during troubleshooting and running the chassis, the HOT, the voltage regulator, and was it R512, I think it was, all decided to die. <laughs> Don't know why, but uh, we got all that replaced, and now we have a working functional monitor. So another KT1420A uh, in the book says repaired. I will let this run for my normal burn-in times. Barring any unforeseen circumstance, we'll call this one successful repair. So stay tuned for the next repair, and hopefully it goes as well as this one. Or if you want to consider this, <laughs> this going badly, uh, you can, but any successful repair is... Uh, it's a repair that went well in my opinion so uh, that being said thanks again hopefully you learned something like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time